Oof, okay. That was a little, uh... Oof. Your pasta casseroles in the oven made over leftover tomato sauce from yesterday. Nice! I was munching on, I guess this is freeze dried cheese. Oh my goodness, this is so much worse when I talk. Favorite human didn't like it, but it's Asiago and pepper jack cheese crisps. And he didn't like the texture. And they're just a touch too warm for me. It's actually not too bad, I can handle this, but kind of borderline yeah they're crunchy they're they're crunchy they're really good I like them they are very crunchy and I think I think it is just freeze-dried cheese but it's crunchy and he's like I I I I don't know man so that's he's like do you want these I'll just throw them away and the first time I had them I'm like no, it's too hot. And the second time I had them, I was like, okay, I'll just keep these handy. I'll eat them on stream or something if somebody like donates a whole bunch of bits. I'll have a bunch of spicy fuff stuff. And then today, all I've had today aside from those has been coffee and water. Like I had, hey, how's Planetarium Nerd Camp? And uh, yeah, all I've had today is coffee and water. And I had water in my coffee. So yeah, I was hungry. And Puck is sitting oh so nicely for the camera. And you can kind of see Tinker's butt there. So I'm going to toss them some Cheerios. Toss one for Tinker too. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, the deep fried freeze dried cheese. Um... So, hey, Uncle Bill. So I was hungry. So, you know, that's one of the least worst things I could have is some cheese. It has protein, right, right, right? I gave one to Tinker and she seemed to like it, but Tinker, of course, will seek out chocolate first, I'm sure. Tinker will also eat just about anything. And yes, yes, before I get flooded with chocolate is bad for dogs, I know chocolate is bad for dogs. I don't think she realizes that chocolate is bad for dogs. My dog has a problem, okay? Okay, my dog has a problem. So I'm not entirely too sure where we left off in. Oh, that's a bad place to get Cheerio stuck. Maybe the, dog, the dogs will find it later. It's like wedged between like, the board that goes around the door and the wall. Well, I guess we'll find out. Hey, Refs Matt, thanks for the resub. So we're gonna, you know, bust. Ah, 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 Major! That's impolite. I didn't ask it. And. Ah, ah, Tinker's in a hurry today. But yes, Tinker says thank you. I say thank you. Puck is just gonna let Tinker's enthusiasm take over. But yeah, thanks for the sub. There's a kind of Cheerio constellation over there. And shut up. Yeah, I know. I'm like, Tinker, get it right. She will. She's just really excited. Are you okay? She's like, yeah, mom, I'm sure. I'm, 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 I'm fine, I'm sure. Do you have any more Cheerios, mom? Mom, 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 Cheerios? So I guess we should fire up Photoshop, huh? You don't get more Cheerios right now. Because I'm fairly certain where we left off, I was at the point where I was going to import photos to Photoshop. That sounds right. Part of me is like, I should really keep more of a detailed diary of what's going on. See, I see stuff from June and April and May. So yeah, I think I need to uh, open some images. What was I doing? Stefan's Quintet? It looks like it's Stefan's Quintet. 
indeed it is. Look at that. So I have one that doesn't look like the others. But that's okay, because I have a second edit of that one. Alright. So yeah, I'm, I'm doing a whole bunch of stuff that you guys can't see. I know, I know, I'm annoying. So. We still have to set up OBS for Photoshop, huh, fuck? Hey, Esther YYZ. So I saw crap. I was like, why do I have a ping? And I'm like, that's why I have a ping, because you pinged me, telling everybody I started streaming on Twitch. So I we're gonna minimize that. You get OBS ready. I think Puck smells the Cheerio I toss in, into an unfortunate spot, but I don't think he can find it. I don't think he can find it. Oh, look at that. Alright, so I need to update what we're doing. We're doing Stefan's uh, Quintet. And boom! Just like that. Alright. So we got a couple minutes and everything's all set and ready to go. I am so excited. You have no idea how excited I am that everything's ready to go. So how has everybody's day been? Um, are we all done and tired of mapping Bennu? Because I know I'm tired of mapping Bennu. And we're still not done. Since I am contractually obligated to talk about Bennu. Let's talk about Bennu for a second. Alright, so right now we have... 1,341 images remaining. And give me a second to fire up the database and I can tell you, I can give you better numbers of how many more images need how many more views. Which I know for some of you would be fascinating to look at, but it's a database. It's got kind of sensitive stuff in there. Oh, what photo and videos are they showing, RefSmat? Um... I'm excited. No, arguing is not always a good thing. All right, so I had I had done a bunch of random. Okay, this is the right one. Ooh, I have admittedly not been in the planetarium lately. Um, or around campus. I don't know what's going on too much in the planetarium world. <laughs> but I am excited about that. Alright, so for whatever reason, we have one image that has 15 counts, but is not marked as done yet. I Don't worry about that. If it stays like that for too long, I'll manually make it done. So really, there's 1,340. I don't know why that one's not done. We have, let's look at how many images only have one, have only had one set of eyes on them. He doesn't die in this. That's always good. We have good news, everybody. And this is like really good news, not, you know, Futurama good news. 198 images have only had one set of eyes on them. That is fantastic news. We have 400 and... 89 that have had two sets. Um, 548 that have had three. 79 for four sets of eyes. 12 for five sets of eyes. One that's had six sets of eyes. I don't understand that one. Nine images for seven. One image for eight sets. One image for nine sets of eyes. We're on ten now. We skip ten. We skip eleven. One Im or one one image that's had twelve sets. One image that's had thirteen sets of eyes. And none have had 14 sets of eyes. So that's good news. The, the number of images that have only had one set of eyes on them 
has gone down and that makes me happy. I know there's been some problems like, oh look, see it did update. Now it says uh, 1,340. So I'm going to minimize the database. If at any time you guys want an update and I come to a kind of a stopping break with working on the images, I'll be more than happy to give you all an update. So yeah, with that, it's about one o'clock. I think everybody's here. If not, you know, they can catch up. They can catch up. Um, Sundays are kind of chill anyways, and that's okay. All right. Fuck, you're, you're slacking. Hey, I see a Cheerio. Hey, they found the hidden Cheerio. They can catch up. <laughs> <sighs> hey, Kerbal! Alright, so um, I guess I need to take away the just hanging out thing, huh? So, transition and add a stream marker to make Susie's life easier. So, yeah. Hi, everybody. I am. Mm. Yeah, let's do that again. So, hello everybody. I am your host, Annie Wilson, and today is Sunday. So, we're doing Science Sunday. And we're picking up where we left off a couple weeks ago with um, Stefan's Quintet. So, now we're just gonna... We ran... Last time we, we did Science Sunday, we ran through... We ran the images through Fitz Liberator, and now I have them ready to be in Photoshop combined together. So, hi, Pagan God. Yes, that is Puck on screen right now. Um, he is an American Eskimo. He is a fluffy. He's a fluffy boy. He's a very fluffy good boy. Can you? Oh, look at that. Puck is the one that actually listens to commands. There is a second dog. Her name is Tinkerbell. She is a dash hound. She is the loud one. She barks before I ask her to bark. Um, and there's also a cat that sounds like a baby. So my usual disclaimer, there are no tiny humans in my house. It is a cat. If you hear a tiny human, it is a cat. There's not even any like medium sized humans. So yeah. And yes, as Paranoir says, we are now down one space toilet, but it was weird because the toilet, we're also down one space station, which I think is a bigger thing than the fact that we're down one toilet. So for a while we had two space stations in orbit and um, we, yeah, we had two space stations in orbit. Almost everybody knows about the ISS. It's been up there for, I think most of my life. Yeah, most of my life. It's been up there all of my nephew's life. I know that much. And it's international, multinational, you know, you, usually American and Russian. Sometimes you get other ESA astronauts up there. You get Japanese astronauts up there. They're, I think they've had a cell. I don't even remember all the different countries that have visited the ISS, but a lot of countries have visited the ISS. So, but China's not on that list and there's some kind of politics and other stuff to get into it. Just like I keep promising to do like a deep dive on why Iran is doing all their weird, you know, not working together. It's weird to us Americans, not working together independent space program. Um, China is stuck in this same kind of situation where they can't work with the US. They can work with Russia and they have worked with Russia. In fact, their spacesuits, um, their crafts, like everything is very uh, Russian reminiscent. I'm not talking about like the indie, indie in quotation marks for China. I'm not talking about um, their rockets and things of that nature. I'm talking about you know, the government space program. So they had a space station up there and I think it was their second one and they're planning to put up a third and there was of course a toilet on that space station. And yeah, I really like space toilets. 
and there are four up in orbit right now, but it was really weird because the same kind of time period within 24 hours that um, the Chinese space station came back into the atmosphere, we launched another space toilet back up. So instead of there being five space toilets for a second, it was like four, then three, then four. So it looks like the number didn't change, but the number changed in a very significant way because, um, um, yeah, that's just how it works. You took a space station out of orbit that just happened to be a toilet. So, um, yeah, in fact, Pagan God, there has been a, um, there actually has been an incident, a couple incidents. So, for those of you that are, have already listened to me talk about all about the, um, scary bits of Apollo, first of all, we're not going to get into Apollo bags today. Because that's, that's a whole other tirade. Um, but the Apollo had a, um... The Apollo missions had this valve thing with a sheath that looks suspiciously like a prophylactic. I think they also used to use these same sheaths that look like prophylactics on, um, with spacewalks and the, uh, male astronauts always said they needed a larger size sheath than what they really did. So they were prone to leaks, but anyways. With the Apollo, they, uh, there was this valve and it literally vented the urine to outer space. But if you opened it too early, um, delicate bits were, you know, exposed to the vacuum. And if they opened it too late, I think there was some other issue. So that's one way that you could have, you know, your body in direct contact with outer space while going to the bathroom. And, um, the second way actually happened on the space shuttle. It was actually on Thanksgiving morning is when this happened. I don't remember the exact mission. I don't remember the exact astronaut, but there was a poor, um, some poor soul got up to use the bathroom really early before everybody else. Keep in mind on the space station, the toilet was like right next to where you ate and slept. It was not a great spot and um, there was a whole bunch of maneuvers you had to do with the shuttle toilet including um, some people liken it to driving uh, a manual transmission a stick shift like you had to keep moving da 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 um, he was on the toilet he shifted it over to whatever it had to do and it was only supposed to be open for a second and that was like to vent it or pull stuff away or something and it got stuck in the open position so this poor man has you know he's just trying to use the bathroom and it's stuck in the open position so it's sucking all the air in the spacecraft out and the Backup air was kept in tanks, compressed um, in tanks, nitrogen and oxygen, that were held in the cargo bay. So they were really, really cold. And for whatever reason, the intake for all of this backup air was right above the toilet. So he's in there in a state of, I imagine, undress, got a vacuum going on underneath of him, and he's got all this cold air coming down on top of him. and klaxon or really loud alarms are going off and wakes everybody up. Yeah. Yeah. Not a good way to spend, you know, Thanksgiving morning or even that's not, you don't, you don't want to see your, your teammates on this a year. It, I remember it was a classified mission and it would have been, I know if I say 80s or 90s, that's a, that's a ripoff. I don't remember the year. I honestly don't remember the year open cage, but yeah, this is a thing that's happened. 
um, just space di- or uh, shuttle toilet Thanksgiving Day. That would definitely that should get you there because it happened on Thanksgiving Day, and I I do know it was a classified mission. Like we don't know what the mission was all about, um, but yeah, space toilet Thanksgiving Day should pull it up for you. All right. So, with all of that, hi! (laughs) Yes, I like space toilets. I like space toilets a bit too much. Puck's like, yeah! Alright, so we'll toss some more cheers to the Puck, and, um, yeah. So, the other- yes, Bombadil. Freezer burn, indeed. I just- I feel bad for that poor man. So, what we normally do on Science Sunday, aside from talk about space toilets, because, let's be honest, I can talk about space toilets for a while. I at up oh, up oh, and I lost everything. It's okay. I'll pull it back up. Um, I colorize uh, space telescope data, and um, this is actual real live data from the Hubble Space Station, which yes was put in orbit by you know the space shuttle, and yes there may or may not be spy satellites that have the same kind of structure as the Hubble. I am not joking. Um, Oh, somebody asked about um, if there's going to be a toilet on the Starliner. If they're going to be up there for any amount of time, there has to be a toilet on the Starliner. Because your your options are toilets or maximum absorbency garments, which are just a really fancy diaper. Which were not developed until... Women went into space. American women went into space. Because, for whatever reason, the Soviets had the right idea before we did with their toilet system. So, yeah. Hey, that dolphin! Um, But yeah, if they're going to be up there for any amount of time, they have to have a toilet. So, Kerbal says, this is something I want to learn how to do. There's a monochrome astro camera and filter wheel with RGB filters I've had on my... I had my eye on for a while. I may get it for, for Christmas. So I don't know. Um, I don't know how different it's going to be for ground based astronomy or astrophotography versus space based. I do know that, you know, if you take certain filters and, you know, you take essentially um, grayscale photos or black and white photos, however you want to do it, with filters, it's going to, you know, filter out some of the light. And yes, uh, telescope data does indeed come down in grayscale. I have four images up right now, and they're all going to look a little different. And um, they were literally all taken with different filters. I don't have the details about the different filters. right now, but that's why they look a little different, is because they capture different ranges of wavelengths of light. And it is literally just easier to slap, you know, to take images with filters than it is to try to do color because reasons and things and stuff. Yeah, there's Tinkerbell! She's like, alright, I got my Cheerios. So, yeah. There's Tinkerbell. And I don't know what this... This one doesn't seem to be the same scale as the others. Oh, it's at 25% instead of 8.8 or 8.33. So this one may get discarded because it's simply not the same scale. In fact, let me do that now because it just... I could layer this on. You want? I could layer it on. I could. So, uh, there are descriptions of the filters used. They are, however, on the internet, and be it, there are a lot of filters, and it is technical information. And sometimes, let's be honest, technical information is hard. So, um, if I was more prepared, I would have this is this filter, this is this filter, this is filter, this this is this filter. But it's difficult to find, you know, the graphs and things that are associated with each filter of, you know, how much wavelengths are 
you know, which wavelengths are lit through, you know, what's the peak, but all of that information is out there. Don't let me scare you away from finding it. The information is out there. It's just finding all of that would make this, would A, uh, create more work for me and B, be probably too high level for some people when most people just need to know, okay, these are taken with different filters and different filters let different wavelengths of color through. I've seen some really nice hands-on demos that explain this where um, things were written, cancel, cancel, cancel. Things were written on black and white paper with red and blue pens. And then I think red and blue, like little filter thingies were put out. Like the filters you'd see in 3D glasses and you just held the filter um, over the image you were looking at and depending on the background and the filter and the, th and the colors you were looking at, you know, red would, I think looking through a red filter at a red print on a white background, I don't think you were able to see it. So it, it's, it's fascinating, it's technical, and like many other things relating to astronomy, I know just enough to be dangerous. So I have made copies of each of the layers and I should be renaming them. And that is because I'm going to drag them over. I heard you the first time, Tinkerbell. Now she's begging for bits. And I'm marking them with the, um, Are you serious? Marking them with the labels, uh, we may actually, <laughs> we may actually go and dig into what filter is what today. Um, simply so I can be like, okay, it's this and this and this because I've already forgotten. Because I, I literally, I enjoy doing this, but I literally only do it while I'm streaming. And because it's been probably a month since the last image, um, I don't remember what filters go where, because normally we have the 814 as a commonly used filter. I feel like the 438 uh, is a commonly used filter and the 606. What I haven't used a whole lot is the 6659. So, but my first thing my first priority is to just get everything. I heard you, Tinkerbell. Oh, <laughs> very serious. Yeah, it does sound red. Yeah. Hey! I'm trying to get her to sit. All right, I got them so excited that they couldn't stand it. So, and speak. Now they're too busy and make it rain. All right. Okay, so I have lost everything because pressing F1 when you have a window selected usually brings up help instead of just, you know, muting my microphone. Now playing the full dome video, Capcom Go, the Apollo story. Aw. Yeah, she is totally trying to, to, uh, to, she just gets very aggressive early about barking. Cause she's like, okay, I know if I bark, I get bits. Um, all right. So thank you for the bits, uh, Bombadil. <laughs> and, um, I'm just going to kind of clean this up. Let's see. Do I have everything in here? Probably not. All right, now I have everything in here. 
So we are going to close all these other ones. And I'm not going to save the changes to them. I can't remember if you guys can see the pop-up windows or not. I don't think you can. Photoshop is weird because sometimes it'll be like, oh, I'm messing with this. And then I realize you guys can't see it on the screen. So I'm going to save this as, first of all, a Photoshop document. And we're just going to call this NGC 7318. And we're going to append a date to it. And today is 28 July 19. So why do I append a date to it? because sequential saving is nice, plus this also allows me to go, okay, this is the change from one week to another week. Like, for example, if I wanted to, um, if I wanted to make a GIF of like the progress. So, Ref's Mat is at Planetarium Nerd Camp for uh, Sidome, or not for Sidome, is it? Yeah, it's for Spitz, but they're probably showing off uh, a Sidome system because uh, Spitz is the producer of Sidomes. And um, from what I've heard, from what RefSmats told me, it's a professional development um, boot camp for how to use Sidome, because there's a lot of software on Sidome, and I'm assuming a chance to network and, you know, talk to people. And the shows that they're showing now, are either part of the library that's provided to you by Spitz or are available for purchase. And Planetarium shows, wait for it, are not cheap. So I guess this is where I'm supposed to plug the fact that I made a free Planetarium show, but yeah. Actually, Dr. Pamela helped with that one too. She did the narration. Okay, so we have all this up. I think we are actually going to look at the filters. So let me figure out where to go for this. So Hubble, Space Telescope, Filters. And we'll also Google Hubble Palette because Hubble Palette. And you're like, what is a Hubble Palette? And be like, I know, right? So there is actually a thing called a Hubble palette. Um, and not seeing a whole lot of quick stuff. Do, 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 do. So this image, or this website's like, here's the Hubble palette, da 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 da. Here's the problem though. I don't, they're not talking about the, um, they're not talking about which, give me one second to find chat and I'll post it. They're, um, They're not talking about the specific, you know, this filter is for this color. It's literally just, hey, this is how you colorize, you know, some astrophotography. And they're really, uh, ground-based astrophotography is really worried about um, H-alpha data. They talk about it in a totally different way than I'm used to talking about it. But here, here's a good link, and this is probably the reference we're going to use. It is the reference we're going to use. Who am I kidding? So this one I remember looking at before. Um, it's not... They've... Um, mm, mm, how do I... This is not a Hubble, the Hubble palette. But it's, it shows you, okay, why are they assigning this particular, um, 
I should actually probably have this up on the screen. Give me one second while I get this up on the screen for the rest of you. Because me looking at it and talking about it and having Photoshop up, I feel, does not help if you're trying to follow along at home. So, give me one second. Where is it? Full screen media. All right, here we go. Do, 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 do. Okay, there we go. So this is what I'm looking at right now. I linked the uh, I linked it, the website in the chat. So this is they're showing an image processed by the Hubble team of I think this is the Butterfly Nebula. It is the Butterfly Nebula. And this that I have on screen right now is what the Hubble team processed and they had one, two, three, four, five, six uh, filters. And I know each like sulfur, nitrogen, hydrogen, alpha, oxygen, helium, and oxygen all have very specific wavelengths they give off light at. I don't have these memorized. So, but this is what they assigned. <laughs> this is what they assigned these colors to. And then this person was like, well, I wonder what it would look like if we um, assign the actual colors that correspond to the wavelengths. And this is what happened. So, then I think we're going to have a cat cat break. I think we're going to have a cat break. Well, come here. So they lined up, you know, their wavelength and element with what it would actually look like versus what Hubble picked. And this is their um, image at the bottom. It's, and according to the creator, it's like, okay, look, this is less aesthetically pleasing. Plus it shows way less detail because in this top image, you can see a whole lot of detail a whole lot of detail and they literally just picked colors so that's that all right come here cat because you're you're gonna you're gonna do this until until we do it so we're gonna take a quick cat break where's your treats he's like but mom hey 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 i have what you want yeah sundays are pretty chill the cat is like this is not what i want human Come on, I'm working on it. All right. That's what you want, isn't it? All right, so he's not on my lap. Kitty, who are you talking to? I think he, he does wonder. I've also figured out that the cat is triggered by the dogs barking because the dogs bark at mealtimes and the cat's like, where's my food? So I keep treats that are literally liquid push-up treats for the cat on my desk. And uh, he's sitting in my lap. I know you guys can't see him. And he's purring and he's eating his treat. And I have to keep kind of glancing down to make sure I'm not pushing it up too fast. Larry says, loving the kitty, singing the blues. He is a very vocal cat. And he's very old. You know, if you're regular, you know he's at least 10 years old. He has next to no teeth. You did get some on me, cat. That's okay. I'll clean it up. Um, he eats exclusively canned food now. And yeah. He used to not like these push-up treats. It took a little while. The cat's name is Tuffy. Literally Tuffy. T-U-F-F-Y. That's Tango Uniform Foxtrot Foxtrot Yankee. At least that's how I spell it. I've seen it spelled um, T-O-U-G-H-I-E, as in Tango, Oscar, Uniform, Golf, Hotel, India, Echo. Um, that is the name he came with. Hi, Ironheart. We're taking a cat break. 
I know you can't see the cat. Trust me, the cat's here. He's in my lap. But that's the name he came with. I don't, um, tea break. Yeah, it is kind of a nice little tea break. So the name he came with, I don't really change. If pets come to me with a name, I typically don't change their name. Um, the only confusion that it's caused is that one of Puck's nicknames is Fluffy. And Fluffy sounds like Tuffy. So I'll be calling the cat and I'll get the dog instead. You alright, bud? I think he's gonna go outside. Probably eat some grass. So almost done. Unless he wants a second one, in which case it's gonna be an even longer cat break. Come on. <laughs> you want to marry a dentist? Yeah, he just- he has, like, he has very few teeth. One time his face was all puffed up and, like, his eye forced his eye closed. And I thought he had an eye issue. No, no, he had a tooth that needed to come out. So. It was all abscessed and swollen and... Oh, same here, the- the name part, not the... Oh, your nickname is Fluffy. Ha, 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 ha. All right. You good? Yeah? You gonna let the dog lick you? Tinker likes licking the cat. Y'all can make your own jokes about that. I've heard them all, and I may have said them. But it's not appropriate. Anyway. I thought you were done. You jumped down. You want another one? How about you just sit in my lap for a little bit and let that one digest? So here's the cat. Because I, I know you guys could hear him. But here's the cat. Can we... Can I go back to work? Do you just want some love? You need to let that digest before I feed you more. He's like, nope. He is super vocal for a cat. He is one of the most vocal cats I've ever owned. You really want a second one? Cat. Is this what you want? Yeah, it's okay. Let's see which way he goes. He might be on dog cam in a second. Nope. He didn't go over far enough. <sighs> Cat, I'm working. I fed him before I started, by the way. I really did. Fed him. Didn't didn't I? Is this what you want? Come on. Give the people what they want, which is cat on cat on camera. Man, I don't know. He's just To us, Tuffy. Yeah, he's he's definitely uh But dogs got treats, so I should get treats. I mean he's not wrong. He really isn't. I just feel bad because I'm like, I have to stop everything. We have to stop talking about Hubble, we have to stop talking about color palettes, we have to stop and it's just like Alright, this this is a thing. This is a thing. Paranor says, I want treats. You want some of my, uh, freeze-dried cheese? I think this freeze-dried cheese is too, uh... Larry says, I want tequila and ribs. Oh, that sounds amazing, actually. I don't think there's another grilling holiday for a while, so I won't have ribs for a while. Oh, man. Grilling holidays come up? Mmm, mmm, mmm. So this is gonna be way off topic. But, you know, because it's going to take another minute or two to, for the cat to finish. So, favorite humans' parents are hyper-competitive, right? 
and grilling holidays for many black families or holidays for many black families are a grilling event in America. So his mom grills, his dad grills, and we get food from both. Well, one time his mom made, um, I think part of a slab of ribs for my parents. And then, um, you know, word got back to favorite humans, dad, that that happened. And actually word got back to his mom first that my parents liked his mom's ribs. And then that she turned around and told favorite humans, dad, Hey, yeah, Annie's parents, Annie's people really liked my ribs. And then before we knew it, we had ribs for my parents from his dad. So that's just, it's just hilarious. But yeah, we end up with like two sets of ribs, like two sets of barbecue stuff. And it's amazing. And I'm, I'm very grateful that they share. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally something as petty as over, um, as petty over whose, whose ribs are best. So Larry asked, does fer fermentation apply to meat? Yes. There is a fish. You are, you really need to let the dog lick you off. You're, you're messy. You keep this up. There's no more. You ate it all. I think it really is all gone. Let's try one more time. He's like, but mom, but mom. Oh, look, there's a whole, there's a little bit left. Um, yeah, uh, fish sauce is, as Veronica says, fish sauce is fermented. Uh, sir strumming is fermented herring, partially fermented herring. I think it's herring, right? But uh, it's partially fermented fish. It stinks really badly and you have to open it up outside, upside down in a pan of water. Like I talked about eating that as like a challenge food on stream for when we finished Bennu or got halfway. But um, most people, like Swedish people have a party when the can of surf strumming is opened and like a picnic. And I don't think I have that many people that I could convince to eat surf strumming, honestly. Um, quite honestly. I have a feeling favorite human would turn up his nose at it. My cat might eat it. My dogs would probably eat it. It would be me and the dogs. That's not much of a picnic. YYZ says the ancient Romans used to use a fermented fish sauce was as ubiquitous as tomato sauce is as for us. Veronica says lucky Annie Ribrich. Oh yeah. Anyways, so I think the cat's been appeased. I think the cat's been appeased. So we're going to scooch this over here. And I'm going to continue looking for um, the actual Hubble palette, which you'd think you'd think I'd have um, memorized by now, but I do not. So here's another. I know. Does that conclude the food section of today's discussion? Why not? So here's another link. I'll pull it up on screen in one second. Um, that also talks about um, false color images, etc., etc., etc. These are um, the three most commonly fo uh, photographed by astronomers are the hydrogen alpha, oxygen three, and sulfur two. Emission lines are captured by using specific narrow band filters, which only let through light at a very specific wavelengths, usually typically band wing, bandwidth of 20 micro meters or less. I think that's micro. Um, hydrogen alpha, the emission line is, the wavelength for the emission line is 556.3 nanometers, that's red. Oxygen three is at 500.7 nanometers. It's green and sulfur two 
is at 624 or 672.4 nanometers and the color is also red. So here they're talking about how the Hubble pilot assign Hubble palette assigns red to um, sulfur two, green to hydrogen alpha, and blue to um, oxygen three. So they don't have table side by side of what's actually assigned, so it's a little confusing to read. <sighs> I don't think he's going to go away. But this is talking about narrow band filters. Here's the problem. Where's where's Photoshop? Let me pull up Photoshop again for you guys. Here's the problem. So I am using it's very hard to see because I know the numbers are tiny. But I have, the filters I have are 665 narrow, 606 wide, 618 wide, and 438 wide. I only have one narrow band filter. One. And yeah, yeah, that's not, it's not going to cover it. So yeah, there are, that's why I was saying, um, that there are, um, there's like an actual Hubble palette. So yeah, yeah. Y'all saw me give the cat two treats. He's still hanging around. I don't know what his issue is. So um, yeah, but there are actual things. So let's look at, now I'm going to Google um, Hubble filters. I'm going to pull up that website so you at least have something pretty to look at. Because we might as even though I, earlier I said, oh, this is too technical, we don't need to get into it, we might as well talk about it. Um, we might as well talk about it because I have already forgotten, you know. There we go, that's a good. I've already forgotten, you know, what I should be assigning to what. Etc. Etc. Um, and I think these were all taken with the wide field camera because it's a UVs. Uh, so we're going to. There's handbooks. There are literal handbooks for different instruments on the Hubble, and that's what I'm looking at right now. And. Why does this not have a thing? Oh. Introduction. It is being very much not what I wanted to do. I keep finding this and then I keep losing it. Aha! All right, so I think this is what we want. Probably not though. This may actually not be UVIS. This may not be the right filter. No, wait. Oh, that's long pass and extremely wide. So there's many, 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 many different filters. In fact, where are my notes? Let me write down exactly which filters we have. So sorry, I have to pull up this first. So we have 665 narrow, 606 wide, 814 wide, which is a common filter, and I should know what number to or what color to assign that to, and 438 wide. So now we're going to look at this thorough put and pull up chat so I can see it. Alright. Um all right, no problem, Paranor. I hope you feel better. Arts of Space says, Hubble palette sounds artsy. It does, doesn't it? It does. They use, a, they use it to show a whole lot of data. So we aren't messing with the long path or the long pass and extremely wide filters. We're messing with, I hate how it does that. We're doing the wide filters. So this, is not what I thought it was. So do a quick comparison. We have four, eight, three wide, 
and it's in yellow, which is hay. <laughs> Today's stream brought to you by Animal Interruptions. Are you done? It's okay. It's okay. All right. So, since it's forcing us to expand it anyways. So it's yellow and it's kind of hard to see and I don't think it was done really well. And yes, they use nanometers to talk about it sometimes and sometimes they use angstroms and it's... I think it's just a matter of a decimal place. So the yellow goes from just over 4,000 angstroms to just over, let's call it, mm, <coughs> let's call it, uh, <coughs> They do, oh my gosh. Uh, let's call it like 4,650 or 4,700 angstroms. So that's, that's, it's wide. It's not capturing just one thing. So, and then, oh, here they go. No, Puck. Everybody has opinions today, and they're not helping my opinion. They're, you guys, if you're going to contribute your opinions, dogs, you, you need to contribute what color I should assign to what. So, for whatever reason, in the thing, they assign that as yellow. I don't know if they picked yellow for whatever reason. So, f uh, here's the other wider filters. So, here's the 814, which is common, since it just wants me to expand. Um, 814, they do have it marked as green, so I'm just making a note of that. And the 814 wide captures, uh, captures data from just over 7,000 angstroms to, it's kind of got this weird, almost linear line down. Um, it can even go all the way up on the really sensitive end to over 9,000. So yeah, y'all are saying green. Green's almost always a color I put in there. So 606, they have from just under 5,000 angstroms to just over 7,000 is red. So hey, that's also a filter we have. So those are the, those are the filters. So we have um, red, green, yellow. And we still have that narrowband filter to do. So now we have to look for the narrowband. Here's the medium filters. This is not what we're looking for because they all end in <laughs> M. Larry says, my t-shirt is colored with the Spitzer visual palette. What? So what you're saying is green is over 9,000? Yes, I am saying the green goes over 9,000. And yes, I did that on purpose. All right, so these are the medium band filters that I have up on, or medium filters that I have up on screen right now. They, um, they're not what we're using. I actually need to bookmark this website. I'm bookmarking this website. Also, I'm going to share this website with chat. So, I may actually make this a command later for just filters. Because this seems like a very useful uh, resource. So here's the narrowband filters which has a cutoff of 6,000 angstroms. That's too low for the narrowband filter we're talking about. This one also has a cutoff of, why, why do you guys do this? This is so silly, still too low. Here we go, here's the narrow filters we're looking for. I really don't understand why they picked this color combination. So we have 665 which they have is yellow 
come on, you can do it. And it goes from, oh wait, that's right, I was clicking expand to make it stop doing that. And it goes just from just over 6,600 angstroms to probably just over, or just around 60 or 6,700 angstroms. Ooh, birth of the planet Earth. Oh, I get it, Larry. Spitzer visual palette is all black because it does IR. Good. Good one. Because I'm like, wait, what? So they have this one marked in their thing as yellow. But we can't have two yellows, can we? My cat is at least being quiet. Don't do it, dogs. I heard it too. Don't do it. Don't do it. They're like, but we really want to do it. So I think their color choice is literally just, because it looks like every first one is red. So I don't think that's really a uh, good indicator of what color it should be. I think that's just a design choice they made, which, eh, eh. And normally we do RGB. So RGY sounds weird. And this one actually does have RVIS or IR system thoroughput plots. This is, how, how old is this website? This seems like something I should have found a really long time ago. So, but yeah, here are all of the plots. It's way more information that you've probably ever wanted to know. Pull back up this pretty picture. Oh yes, please stop. Please stop. You know, red equals angry. Well, we need, we need R or we need red. And typically we do RGB image. And I really do feel like 814 is assigned green. There's a really easy way to answer this, you know. I don't know why I didn't think of it before. I'm going to open one of my older images that's done. Uh, let's see, NGC, I'm looking at 7753. Give me a second, I'm trying to find one that's you see, June, not flat. There we go. Let's try that one. Um, I, I don't know. Oh, that doesn't help me. This isn't a Hubble image. This is not a Hubble image. This was a Spitzer image. This is one of those weird things where I'm like, I feel bad for not doing this more often because I really don't know what I'm doing. Are you done, dog? Hold on. I am indeed suffering from Animus Interruptus today. Why are you guys on edge? Everybody's on edge today. I may actually have to call it because they're being so weird. 
All right. Um. I didn't label this one as nicely as I wanted to, but that's fine. This is an image that I, this is actually one of my favorite images that I've done. So it looks like I had assigned 814 as red on this one. And we don't have that one. I also don't have that one. I also don't have that one. I have something close to it though. Blue. Hmm. Dat Dolphin says, at least the dogs are well heard participants within your household, household's democracy. They, I don't know what they're barking at. They're barking at everything. Yeah, I don't. Part of me is like, all right, look, we got all the images in. We talked about filters. I feel like I'm going to have to do some, some research later on my own. So here's what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to take a break. Because usually we this only does go on for an hour. I want to take a break. I want to figure out what the heck is going on with all of my animals. I'm going to eat food that's not spicy freeze-dried cheese. And um, why is there no toilet in the Starliner? There should be eventually. There should be eventually. <sighs> all right. So this is what's gonna happen. Oh wait, yeah. This is disillusion says Cheerios for Annie. That may actually be what happens. You alright, bud? Alright, so I'm gonna take a break from streaming. Like I'm gonna shut down the stream. I'm gonna call it good with um, the images today. We did and didn't make a lot of progress. We talked about filters. Uh, we talked about how different things happen. I literally need to keep better notes of what I do um, to do all of the things, all of the things. And because I, I don't keep good notes on what I do, which is terrible. I should actually make a Google document of all the things I do. Um, Starliner, I think, oh, it is Boeing, okay. Uh, there, there will be a toilet eventually. But yeah, I'm going to stop streaming. I'm going to figure out what's going on with all my animals. Um, probably within the hour I will be back on and we'll do some Bennu mapping. So, yeah. We do some Bennu mapping. We hate map Bennu together. And we have a productive Science Sunday because... Today is just rough for me. And now, oh, I do have sound. And Bombadil has donated bits. Tinker, can you please? <laughs> I have given up. I have given up. Um. <sighs> Animus Interruptus is today. Gem Doctor says the difference between science and faffing off around is the note taking. See, but I the part the worst part is is I have a record of what I do. I just don't refer to it. Because in case you didn't know, all of these videos, for better or worse, are archived to YouTube. Fine. Come here. Just come here. All of these videos are archived to YouTube. And um that might actually be what I what I do is go and, and pull up all the old resources. Because I figure I've done this for a year. I should know what I'm doing by now, right? 
It's like, I don't know about this. <sighs> don't, please don't, please don't, please don't, please don't, please don't do that. Um, yeah. Yeah. So here, here is my, um, my abbreviated wall of text. So this Science Sunday, we'll call it part one, I guess, because I'm coming back to do Bennu. Um, has been brought to you by you, first of all, because y'all are awesome. Uh, second of all, this is a production of PSI, that's Planetary Science Institute in Tucson, Arizona, working collaboration with Youngstown State University in Youngstown, I think it's sunny outside, Ohio. Um, more bits, thank you for the bits! Ha! I did it without them barking. Thank you! everybody for your patience today um we will come back with more science in a little bit but yeah yeah i'm gonna go figure out what all these critters want all of them i'm gonna take a bite to eat and we'll come back and we'll mark some we'll hate mark benu together because benu so yeah i'm gonna roll the credits hey thanks for following meta directive It's just one of those days, you know? All right, I'm gonna roll the credits. I should be back within an hour and yeah, I'll see you then. And hopefully it will be a much calmer, calmer atmosphere then. So yeah, thank you all for being awesome and I'll see you in a bit, bye.